additional example proofs, and here we go. Um, for this one, we're given HF is parallel to GK. Okay, that's marked in there. And angle F and angle K are right angles. Okay, that's nice. Prove the triangles are congruent. Hmm. Well, let's go with the first thing we see here. I got parallel lines. And whenever I've got parallel lines, the first thing I look for is a Z. So I'm going to draw in my Z, which is right there. When I get that Z, that means that those inside angles, those alternate interior angles, have to be congruent. Awesome. So I've got one pair of congruent angles, a second pair of congruent angles. This is not going to be right angle hypotenuse leg. I've got two angles already. Okay. What else do I have? Well, the picture has a shared side. So I've got that. Now look, what do I have? Angle, two angles and a side. Is this angle side angle or angle angle side? Hmm. Well, the side is not between the two angles. The side is offset. So this is angle angle side. And I've got my plan. I can write my proof. So it's our first given. HF is parallel to GK. Now, someone always asks me, well, what if I want to do the F and K at right angles first as my given? You can. That's absolutely fine. It really doesn't matter. But once we use a given, it's nice to take that given and use it to find some congruent parts before we go to the next given. So let's find our congruent parts with that. We already established what that is. That was angle FHG congruent to angle KGH. And those were alternate interior angles. Theorem. Have to have that word theorem. It's not the converse, it's a theorem. Just like vertical angles, we have to use the word theorem, not just the name of the angle pair. We want to use the word theorem. Okay, so that was that pair we got. Okay, so those are checked off. We got that. We used a given. We used a given to find a pair of congruent parts. We go to our next given. Angle F and angle K are right angles. That's given. And we've seen this a couple times before. Therefore, angle F is congruent to angle K. Sorry. Why? Because all right angles are congruent. All right, that took care of this. Now what do we have? Oh yeah, we have the reflexive side, so that's easy. HG segment is congruent to itself. And that was all the parts we needed. So triangle HFG, again, I'm taking it right from here. Literally, folks, you can't see this, but I am looking up to see what that is, so I get the correct corresponding order. And we already decided our shortcut before we began. There we go. So again, we kind of see that pattern of we take a given, we use it to find a pair of congruent parts. We take a given, we use it to find a pair of congruent parts. We take the picture, we use it to find a pair of congruent parts, we're golden. Okay. Uh, here I have two perpendicular lines. We've seen this before, and L is the midpoint of EG. All right. Well, we know the perpendicular line deal. Perpendicular line gives us right angles. Right angles gives us congruent angles. We've seen that a couple times. L is the midpoint of EG. Oh, L is the midpoint of EG. Oh, that means these two pieces have to be congruent. 
and we have ourselves a shared side. So what shortcut do we have involved here? Oh, it's going to be a side angle side. So again, we set this up. Start with one of our givens. Uh, FL is perpendicular to EG. Given. Now we've seen this a few times now. This is our little three-step thing that we have to do to get the congruent angles. Perpendicular doesn't give us congruent angles. We always go to right angles. So angle FLE and angle FLG are right angles. Definition of perpendicular. And then angle FLE and angle FLG are congruent. I should have just said are congruent to FLG, sorry. Let me rewrite that. Angle FLE is congruent to angle FLG, and all right angles are congruent. Okay. Step four. All right, so we use this we use this given to find a pair of congruent parts. Next given, L is the midpoint of G uh, at EG. And that's given. And we immediately from that got EL is congruent to LG. That's a definition of midpoint. And they decided to go a little crazy with the hammers here. I'm very sorry about that. And so finally, that's a sec. We use that now to find our pair of congruent parts. And our third thing was a reflexive side. Yep, FL is congruent to itself. And so we have our triangle congruent statement, triangle GLF is congruent to triangle ELF. And again, for a congruent statement, the reason that goes here has to be my shortcut. It's side angle side. So we have to do a shortcut there. One more in this additional example. Angle S and U are congruent. RS is congruent to VU, prove the triangles are congruent. All right, so they've already marked in the two givens. And these, this is a great one because it's no definitions or perpendiculars or anything like that. It's just stuff. Um, there's really nothing more to conclude because those are directly congruent parts in our givens. Love that. That makes it so easy. What else do we have? Well, we don't have a shared side. We can't assume that T is a midpoint of anything because we're not told that. You have to have facts to make that conclusion. But what we do have is our vertical angles. Oh, okay. Do I have congruent triangles? Sure. What shortcut? Angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. So I've got my plan. Step one, angle S congruent to angle U, given. Step two, we used our, we used our given and it gave us congruent parts. We're good. RS congruent to VU, given. Again, we used our given, we got some congruent parts directly. No extra work, like free stuff. Step three. We have our vertical angles. Oh, and I know it's going to be vertical angles theorem. I have to name them correctly. So angle RTS is congruent to angle, and you could say VTU or UTV. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. And I've got all my parts. I've got angles and a side, 
But it, even though I listed them angle side angle, the shortcut we're using is angle angle side because it's the it's the order things go in the picture, not the order things go in the proof. That's important. So triangle RST is congruent to triangle VUT, and our reason is angle angle side. So there's just a few more examples for you. Um, I hope you find that helpful. You might want to rewatch some of these. You might want to try to redo some yourself. I know that this proof thing takes some practice, but I hope you're finally starting to see, after all these examples, some of the patterns that we use in proofs. Now, we did not cover every possible thing that could come up. There, we didn't talk about angle bisectors. We didn't do any examples that have things like that, but it's going to work the same way. Make your plan, then write your proof. If you don't know every reason exactly, that's okay. All right, do the best you can. But again, when it comes to these proofs, get as many, get as much as you can and work from there. If you got to guess at a couple things, fine. Because let's face it, in your homework, usually these are drag and drop. So you've got, you're not always writing these from scratch, which sure makes life a lot easier. So there we go. There are some more proof examples. Good luck and good night.